Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott Alverson, and today we are going to be talking about 3D printing. And uh, I am an amateur of 3D printing, and I will never claim to be a professional by any means. Um, but I will tell you that I have learned a lot in the years, the year, about, about a year now that I've had these printers. And uh, I bought them during the, uh, the pandemic. And I decided I was just going to try and do some stuff during the pandemic because, well, I'm stuck at home, and so let's do some stuff, right? Um, so on, on with the 3D printer, though. I have two of them. I have a Anycubic Photon, just base model Photon resin printer, which prints out when it works, and when I can get it to cooperate with me, prints out fantastic minis. Now, I won't show too, too many minis in this. I'm not going to talk about that printer so much in this video. What I am going to talk about, though, is my other printer, which is a filament printer, and it is called the Creality CR6SE. And I bought that at Kickstarter uh, when it was out. And I paid the bigger price for all the upgrades and all the fancy smancy stuff. And you know what? It does not disappoint. I have had so much luck with that printer. And I think the only time it's really failed to print it are my fault. I mean, me not understanding printing and what, what you have to do to make sure that prints work. Um, so throughout this video, I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the prints that I've done. And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and show you some of the prints that I've done. And wow, we're just gonna talk about them a little bit, so that way you get to see what's going on. Um, on to the stuff I'm gonna show you, and we'll talk about the goods, the bads, the uglies. There's not too many uglies about this printer for sure. Um, in fact, I nothing really glaringly terrible about this printer that I know of. And I don't, I don't have a lot to compare it to, obviously. But if every filament printer worked as easy as this one did i don't think that there would be that many other printers on the market because there wouldn't need to be right anyway so here we go we're gonna look at some of the stuff that i've done i will say my first big project actually my first project i will show you was this one this one right here um i didn't understand how print 3d printers worked and um, so this came as a free file on the software for the thing, so I just printed it. I just thought, well, let's see how it works. Actually, I think it was probably printed, yeah, this way. And this is a one-piece, uh, like, flexible dinosaur, as you can see. You get up close, and you can see that that's the build plate side. You can see the smooth checkered marks there. And then if you get close, you can see the filament, but... All this is printed one at one time. There are no extra assemblies. It's just all printed just like this. Um, and yeah, it's pretty awesome. He's he's a little he's a little guy that sat at this table for many hours. Been played by a lot of people probably since I got the printer, which is probably a year ago. And he's pretty much sat on this table and been played with. He's a little floppier than he used to be when we when I first got him. I won't lie, he doesn't like to stand up as straight as he used to. He'll do it. Just takes a little more coordination. But he's definitely floppy, but he has been durable. It's, I've been very happy with this. Uh, the filament I used was from Creality. This is the stuff they included, was the white stuff. Um, I'm not going to go over everything I printed so far, but I will go over a variety of things that I printed. Um, so that was number one print. Of course, I did print out the other uh, stuff they had. They had an EV, they had a little bear, and some other miscellaneous stuff some hooks and some shoe holders and stuff like that. Um, my next really big project would have been my vise, which is this. Um, I printed this in two different colors just so I could try to change the colors up and just to see what everything looked like. Um, the vise is really actually pretty handy. It's held together with some amazing little clips, which are pretty hard to see on this side. You kind of see them on this side, but they push in from over here and then they clip into there and that holds it together um it actually has some pretty strong gripping power uh and i've used it for at the hobby store here uh, when i'm doing miniatures and stuff and i'm trying to cut down pieces or mod stuff um it's pretty handy it's nice to have a little vice that it cost me you know a dollar or so to make because that's about how much the filament it used um the, as you if you didn't know 3d printers don't necessarily print solid they print this honeycombed structure inside of a print and then the exterior layers are of course solid and so is the bottom and the tops but anything you see on the exterior is usually a solid layer like two or three layers maybe even four and then the interior is all this honeycomb stuff which is really i don't think i could pick that up on the camera very well you kind of can see it a little bit but 
yeah, you can kind of see it like right in here. You can see the honeycomb structure sitting back in here. But yeah, so, but it does, it is still very strong. I have not broke it yet, thankfully. Um, it does have removable plates. Now, that one's a little stubborn. I think I might have made that one permanent. I don't know. But um, you can see the little removable plates and whatnot. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, the vase has been one of my favorite little toys and my little favorite little things. Um, my next big project that I'm going to work on as far as tools go is going to be a table saw adapter that turns my Dremel into a small micro table saw. And that'll be fun to print too. But ah, in between that now and then, I have printed out other things. I have printed out um, some stuff from my gas lens. Here's a trophy I printed out for gas lens. I haven't finished painting this one yet, and I will at some point go ahead and finish painting this, but just have not done it yet. Um, we have some other stuff that we printed for gas lands. You know, we've got all kinds of stuff that goes on here. These are the tower markers, you know, so we can put it out like this. And with gas lands, this is a starting, starting line type thing. Uh, we have some barricades I've printed that I've gotten a little more detail that I've started painting on some of them, as you can see. They're kind of cool. you got the little tires wrapped up, and you got the little corrugated steel, the little fuel barrels. Got some other bigger tires back here, some iron pipes. This is all done on the filament for the Creality printer. Um, yeah, and I mean, it just goes to show you there's a lot of variety here, and it is very fun to print. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, here's some more. We have a a wagon, which we used we used for our tabletop gaming here, and it, it prints. It, you know. It printed out pretty nice. I'm not sure. I like the quality of the design myself. I would say that that's probably the worst part about this print was the, I, I just printed it out because I wanted to try some terrain for our tabletop gaming. It's not bad. Like if I paint this up, you probably wouldn't even know that it was 3D printed. Now I know because I see it, but I, I'm not sure I like the way they did the wood textures and stuff like that on it. I think I would probably do something a little different just to make it more, I don't eat more easy to paint. Um, so anyway, we're moving on to the next part. Now, not all this stuff is 3D printed. This stuff is from Dungeons and Lasers. This is my terrain that we had bought. Uh, if you'd seen one of my past videos, we had bought some terrain pieces to play with our tabletop RPG. The problem is, is we, we had multiple scenarios where we had jail cells, right? And of course, there is no jail cells in Dungeons and Lasers. Not, not yet. They might have some released by now because they're up to set three, I think. Just Dungeon Laser stuff. And it just pops right in there. So I went to the 3D printer. I went to a program called Tinkercad, I believe. It's free. It's on the internet. Um, it's a web browser CAD program. And I designed my own jail bars. Now, I didn't design any doors because there's plenty of doors in Dungeons & Lasers. But as you can see, I did, and this all printed out. Super simple. And it pops right in, just like it's supposed to. Get over here. Just like it's supposed to. As long as I can see what I'm doing here. Just pop those in, just like just like any other piece of Dungeon Laser tray tiles. We pop them in. We snap on in, and now we have some jail bars, right? So yeah, that was something I did. I just decided to design it, and it wasn't that hard designing. It wasn't that bad. Um, so I would recommend that if you want to do this, this is easy. I printed, I think I was printing two or three of them at a time because I noticed that if I started printing tons of them at a time, lined up like this, sometimes the strings would go across. That, again, is not the printer's fault. That is my fault for not knowing how to operate the printer properly. Uh, so we're going to move on to one of my latest projects. And I've done two projects now that... Uh, I've been really happy with and I might actually get into some kind of monetary version of selling these through permission of the company that I got the STL from. Um, he also has hundreds of more and I'll, I'll link him below hopefully if I remember and we'll go from there. Um, this is what they call, this is a dice cup and this took about 16 hours to print on a really high resolution. Let's see if you can, let's see if we get a good film there. You can see that it is a very high resolution print. Not bad, if you ask me. Um, it has a, a, a the, the part for screwing all it. I 
just for whatever reason can't get it in my head. But this is the lid, and I just finished that this morning. So this is called the Merchant's Dice Cup. You can see there's the screw parts for the... You can see there that this is fantastic quality and detail. And I'm not using the highest end filament. I am using just uh, stuff I bought on Amazon that was in stock. Um, I don't know what the name of it was right off the top of my head, but that is what's going on. I have that one. And then I did my dice tower, which uh, is this bad boy. Let's see if we can get a better view on this one. Oh yeah, here we go. This is the dice tower that I printed. Now this was a 60 or 72, 60, 60 or 70, 68 or 72 hour print. Um, it was quite, I think it was a 68 hour print. And I can tell you what, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this print. And this is, I mean, I have printed hundreds and hundreds of items with my printer. I have used many different types of filament. And the only filament I run into any problems with was a clear filament that I had. And I think it's because it was just too cold in the room that I was doing, because I was doing it in the winter inside my studio, which gets kind of cold. So I think the only problem I had was, uh, at the time, was that. You see the textured bottom. I love, I, I actually like the textured bottom of my build plate. I took the glass one off and I put on the metal flexible one. And I love the texture. It's And everything seems to stick better to the textured bottom. I just love, I, I don't know, I don't know why I like the bottom texture so much. I think it just, I don't know, I just like it a lot. But as you can see, it's a dice tower. It is a fantastic print. Um, it is so like, you would really have to be a serious printer person, a person who knows a lot about 3D printing to find any really, what I would call flaws with this print because it did such a nice job. You know, even if we get up close, you know, you can see that it's a really fancy, well, I'll show you right where it ended. That's, that's the ending right there. That little point right there is the last bit of print that it does. And it just looks so smooth and so nice. And the cracks, and you know, if I paint this up, you wouldn't even have any clue that I had 3D printed this thing out. So there you go. That is kind of some of the stuff that I've done with this printer. Um, I, I have hooks and all kinds of miscellaneous stuff that I printed. I've tried to print some minis out, which I did not have great success with when I'm printing like 20 millimeter mini, minis for the game and stuff. I did get some success. It wasn't all failures. Um, but I just figured I would switch over and print big pieces and, you know, pieces from my board games that don't need to have, like, you know, five little small daggers or a little chain on him that needs to be printed out with a filament printer. Um, I'll save that for the the other printer I got over on the table over there. What, what, what more can I say about this printer? It is a fantastic printer. It is super easy and user-friendly. Uh, Creality did a fantastic job with that printer, and I don't know why... Um, Every company would not be going down that line. Um, the best the best features of that printer, I would say, are the auto leveling and then the auto resume features. Um, not to mention that the, the extruder and the filament break detection, all those features are on a printer for under five hundred bucks. Like, and that is lots of those features are for high end printers. You know, um, this is a for beginners and I would say even up to advanced users because you can get some like I, I showed you the prints. I mean, that's a big old print. See that? Look at the next to my big skull. That's a big print. That come out no flaws. Now, I'm not saying every print's going to come out with no problems because you will have problems with some prints. That's just the nature of printers, especially since you can't do anything about humidity and temperatures all the time and, you know, circumstances, environments, whatever. But, man, what a deal. If you're ever thinking about getting into printing, I would not shy away from purchasing the Creality. As far as a new person, because I'm absolutely new at this, I would not be shy about purchasing the Creality uh, CR6SE printer. Um, it is fantastic. I know I didn't show you the printer, and you know, and just because the video is getting long, I'll, I'll throw some, I'll throw a link down below to it. Um, I, I have no affiliate to them at all. There, there's nothing's been free. It's just, just I purchased this on Kickstarter. And I just wanted to share with you guys what I have done with it and with my limited knowledge. Anyway, so to wrap this video up, I want to say thank you for taking your time out to watch this video and enjoy the the prints that I've done that I've enjoyed making. And hey, one more thing before I go. I want to uh, say, because I told my buddy I would do this, that 
a lot of this stuff I've only bought, and I like I said, I printed all the stuff you've seen here. Let me show you again. This, all of this, right? All this train pieces, all this, plus whole bunches more. And I think I purchased a total of five, four rolls of filament. One I have not used barely at all, which is the clear one, which I explained to you in the video. I've had problems printing with that. And I think that's because it's a user error and I was printing in the winter. Um, I haven't tried to print this summer yet with it or this fall, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call it side today is. Um, I've printed, I've used up two rolls. Of, this will be, with the big, with the big skull will be my second roll of black. Um, I printed out one roll of white. I think that's it. So two, yeah. So two rolls of black I've used. And the skull itself takes 300 grams, right? This takes 300 grams of filament, which is about one third of a roll. So, and this here, this one, which is still on the same black roll, by the way, took about another 150 grams. So I am about halfway done with that roll. I probably could print probably another skull, maybe another thing, but um, yeah, I mean, it, you can print a ton of crap with this. This is probably just a couple grams of filament, like no big deal. The wagon here, that's probably six or seven grams. I don't, I'm not hundred percent sure. I, I don't remember everything that I printed, but I can tell you that it wasn't much. The, let's see here. My templates are a couple grams a piece. Like it, nothing. These are nothing to print. And they print fairly fast. Like it takes me, you know, half hour, 45 minutes to print out a, to print out one of these uh, templates. You know, if I print out a whole pile of them at a time, it takes a little longer, but that's because the printer's got to move from print to print. Um, this one, probably a few grams. Not a big deal. None of it takes a lot. I mean, the biggest things were this thing, which is huge. If you compare this to, say, my little tiny thing, I mean, you can see the difference. 300 grams, a few grams. Easy squeezy, man. Um, yeah, so I told him I'd add this, so I'm going to add that little bit there. I almost forgot. Sorry. Sorry, bud. Um, but I didn't, I put, I put it in there. I told you, um, Oh, one more thing. Here we go. That's probably 50 or 60 grams. It seems like it's a lot more because there's a whole, it's, it's fairly big. You know I mean? Even if you compare it to this poor little thing here, but everything's hollow. Remember everything's hollow. Just the superstructure is not hollow. The, the out exterior shell is not hollow. It, the rest of it's hollow basically with little tiny crisscrosses to hold it all together. So anyway, I guess that will be it for now. I had to get that part thrown in there. So anyway, until next time, my name is Scott. You call me Guff. We'll be signing off.